The loss of a child is something that no parent should ever have to endure, and yet so many do. My name is Father Scott Vanderveer, and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about loss. It's the first in a series of episodes that we're calling Profiles in Endurance. And these conversations are going to be had with people who've been through some very challenging life experiences. And that has given them some hard-earned wisdom that they now are willing to become vulnerable enough to share with us. These conversations have been recorded during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so they are intended to help all of us face and endure what feels like an intolerable situation. This first conversation occurred with a woman who's been through the unthinkable loss. And you'll find here within her humble and honest reflections. There's even an opportunity for her to speak directly to those parents who are also walking on this path. So enjoy this and savor it because this kind of wisdom is not the kind we get to hear every day. And when you get to the end, think of someone you could send this to who really needs it. Let us begin. We are joined today by a St. Patrick's in Ravenna parishioner, Mary Jane Persico, who grew up in Albany in the Cathedral Parish and lived as a city girl, the daughter of a musician and a homemaker, until she met and married a man from one of the largest and most connected families in Ravenna. And that changed her life completely because this city girl, daughter of a musician, wound up moving to a small town and building a life in Ravina, New York. Mary Jane Persico is here now. And Mary Jane, help us to get to know a little bit about your story by talking about your family, your, your husband and your children. I was married at the Cathedral Church in Albany in August of uh, 1955. I had five children, four boys and one girl. Where's the girl in the middle of that? The girl is right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Two boys on each side. What a spot for and her. It really was. It really was. The boys, of course, were forever torturing her. But she made it, and uh, <laughs> she made herself known. Mm. <laughs> but um, Dan and I were married for 56 years before he died in 2011. Mm. Now, in, the, in, the, um, in 1997, we were faced with a tragedy. Mm. My youngest son, Tommy, who was 30 years old, he was killed in an automobile accident. He fell asleep at the wheel. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Father. We, we had, as you can imagine, just a, an agony. Mm when he passed away. He was a, a, a licensed electrician, but at that time in the 1990s, when construction was not, not doing very well, he got a job at the GE and was on shift work. Well, he had a terrible, terrible time sleeping, uh, trying to get some rest during the days and working at night uh. that uh, that one afternoon when he decided to, to take a little ride and maybe get relaxed, he hit a uh, bridge uh, em embankment and um, he was killed instantly. And it's just, there's no, there's no reason for it. There's no one at fault. It was just an accident. Correct. That's what happened. Oh. Yeah, he just fell asleep at the uh, at the wheel of the car, and uh, and he did not survive it. Mary Jane, 
there is not a mother listening who hasn't worried that that could happen someday. And, and you are a mother like, like some others who have actually lived through it. What can you, there's many people listening who are probably afraid to even hear a story like this because it, it opens up for them their greatest fear. And I'm wondering if you can help us just by, it's a very generous thing to, for you to be willing to talk about this at all. But I'm wondering, can you talk about those first weeks and months when everything was, was fresh? What did you do to get through the days of those first weeks and months? I was truly blessed because I had um, the other four children at the time. And we spent a great deal of time together. I never believed for a minute that it was God's will or, and none of us talked as, as if it was just a plan uh, from the dear Lord. Uh, um, we, just, we just talked about what happened and we were true, truthful. I mean, we, we really shared our feelings. Uh. And it helped us, it helped me through that time a great deal. Mm. And the extended family and friends, they were so helpful. Just by coming after a while just to visit and and share some of their stories about Tommy and how much they cared about him. It was so helpful for me to have to listen to and to to know that, that they shared such a, such a great love for him too. The thing that I would imagine would be true for some people is that they wouldn't want to talk to a lot of other people. They want to be alone. They would want to isolate. Uh, and I'm wondering, have you ever known anyone who's taken that approach? Does that make any sense to you that some people might be overwhelmed by the company? Absolutely, yes, yes. I, I have heard, heard of and I have seen other people who are, um, who, who have, who have responded like that, but my my feeling is let your loved ones in. Mm. Don't shut yourself off mm. from people who love you mm. and care about you. Mm. I wonder... They, yes, go ahead. Excuse me, Father, go ahead. Well, no, could you finish what you were going to say? It sounded wonderful. Well, I was just going to say, when they talk to you, um, perhaps in the beginning, you will feel, you will shudder. But mm. then, all of a sudden, when you really start to think about what they are talking to you, you start to see, to see the individual and and to remember, and uh, then all of a sudden the love comes in, and it is very helpful. Oh, beautiful. Tell me, you know, it, as a priest, I, I deal with people going through loss, and there are some statistics that many of us who work in helping professions hear about how very common it is when there is the loss of a child for the marriage of the parents to fall apart. That is a very common phenomenon. And they just cannot survive the sorrow of the loss. But your marriage did. Do you, can you explain to us at all from your perspective why you think your marriage was survived that, that sorrow? I think it survived because Dan and I grieved differently. Mm. He was a, a person who kept things to himself, didn't think, he, think uh, he should share his feelings with others. 
And so he would sit in the chair and stare straight ahead and just rock back and forth, thinking of things himself. Hmm. But for me, for me, it was helpful to share. In fact, I was introduced to an organization called Compassionate Friends, who is an, which is an organization uh, that has parents and relatives of people who have lost their children, uh, brothers, sisters, and so on. And I, and I found it so helpful because I listened to, to their stories, I heard what went on in their lives, and I, I just felt such compassion for them too. It was, it was just something I found so very helpful for me. Mm. And Dan and I allowed each other to grieve our own ways. That is a grace. Uh, that is a grace to allow, to not judge each other for doing it differently. Yes, yes. It, and it really was such a help because, um, as I said, especially for me, I, I really needed, I needed to talk. I needed to tell others about what happened and I needed, it helped me to face it. It helped me to, to, to get stronger mm. and to understand it a little bit better too. Too, uh, I felt much better by by being able to to get it out, so to speak. Mm. You know, you're somebody who I know has a, a very a very strong faith, and I I I'm curious about how your faith was a way for you to move through this time. How did your faith sustain you through this? It's because God, I felt very strongly that God was with me mm. and with, with all of us, with our family. I just felt that God never left. He was always there and I, I just, trusted that. I, I, I knew I could talk to him, and I felt that the dear Lord cried with me mm. many times when we talked together. Uh, I just felt, I just felt safe with him. Mm. Uh, and, and I just prayed and just talked, talked to him uh, as I would to you. What sometimes it, it was it even out loud? Sometimes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Where would you go Often. to? Where would you go to talk out loud to God? I would go to the bedroom by myself mm. and either sit on the edge of the bed or in a chair and and just talk to him as if <laughs> as if he because I believed he was with me. Yes. I did. Yes. I, 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 it was the it was my saving grace, you know, to to think that and to know that he would listen. Yes. What what else did you do uh, with your faith besides talk to God out loud? I I well of course I, I there was always and and uh, I appreciate so much there uh, there was always the ability to go down to church and say some prayers there by the tabernacle. There was always, almost always a daily mass mm. and, um, and being around the, um, the people who were at church even, uh, they, they were always, um, so helpful. It was so helpful just to see them and 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 to be praying together, and uh, it, it was it, it was something that was my support. Mm, mm. How, I, it's 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 so I realize that it's so important that people 
pick whatever it is that works for them, but that they practice their faith because that word practice strikes me as very important. It's what trains us for the hard things of life. You, you, oh, yes, Father. You had, you had resources that you couldn't imagine living without. True. <laughs> so true. I did. I, I, I was so fortunate, so very, very fortunate. What? That, that, uh, that the people, and, and, and I was also fortunate because of, of the, uh, my friends, and um, and companions, and because everyone, they they just let me talk, mm. and and they didn't try and evade it or change the subject or or run from it. They would just let me go through it. Mm. I see it. I, and that those kind of friends, those, I, when you said didn't change the subject, that is a hard, mm -hmm. isn't that hard for people? Yes, very hard. Yes. Many, uh, I've, I've, I do know that there are some people um, who are, may even be, have felt uncomfortable because they may may have thought that that I was not doing what I or no that's not the right word it it they felt as though I was making myself sadder uh. you know by by speaking uh, by speaking about Tommy and and all about the life we had together but no that's not true to me, it's not true. I feel as though when you speak about the, the um, when I spoke about Tommy, it was, he brought back such memories as if he was, he was there. Mm. And I loved that. Mm. Yes. It, it sounds like one of the things you had to do, t correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things you must have had to do to love that was also be willing to to tolerate the fact that it hurt at the same time. Yes. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. It it mm -hmm. also hurt. You loved it, but you to in order to enjoy the the memory, you had to also be willing to let it hurt. Right. And it 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 did it did help to um it did. It did help to, to kind of to to solve, not to solve, but it, it helped me through the through through it all. And it was like um, it was like a a, a sore. Uh, it was a healing. It was a healing for me to be able to talk about him. Mm. Mm. Tell me about what. Now that it's been, it's been many years. It's been twenty-three years this year. What's the anniversary, Mary Jane? He he passed away on January sixth, nineteen ninety-seven. Wow! So you've you've just crossed into twenty-three years. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you at this point connect with him? And with God, how how do you? What is the relationship like now, twenty three years later? It's 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 still the same. I mean, I still see him, and uh, and I smile because uh, uh, it, it's there's so much love. I feel I feel the love. I I. I smile when I when I picture him um, in all his ways, and I smile with with our dear Lord. And sometimes uh, I talk to him about you know um, about Tommy, and and I seem to, and it's almost like remember when I <laughs> yeah I, I I talk about him. Mm -hmm. He had not been married very long at the time he passed away. Is that right? 
Mm, he had been married about three years, but they had a, a little baby uh, just over two months old. Yes, yes. They had a little, a, a little girl. How, mm-hmm. how have you stayed connected to, to his, his wife and their little girl? I think that I think that his memory uh, is is so strong for all of us that it is it is our link our link to each other and and yes it's a very strong relationship thank thank the good Lord I'm, I'm so happy about it and of course of course having Monica. Uh, and to enjoy and, and always to love was a, was a great, a great help to me, too. Mm. Mary Jane, and, yes, go ahead. Well, we stayed connected, Father, because uh, I felt, I felt such, such strong emotions and such, so much love, uh. so much love for for them and of course my granddaughter <laughs> right I, I I'm I almost pause to uh, to say the next thing because uh, a lot of our listeners are not expecting it but part of your life journey has been that that was not your only loss and yeah. it it is a very hard thing. I, I, it hurts to even, even say it, but you told us already that you later lost your husband in 2011 after, did you say 56 years together? Yes. So that is a, there's a number of people listening who have lost a spouse and it has been devastating for them. Uh, but it was not your only loss. After, after your husband, Dan, died, you also tragically lost a second son. And yes, Father. I, 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 I just, um, I think a lot of people listening were not expecting us to say that, and they're probably feeling just awestruck and brokenhearted. How, how in the world have you go on, gone on through that? What, what allows you to travel through such hard losses? Well, even after I lost Tommy, it certainly was just like happening the first time. There was it was just as devastating, just as much an agony. It just went through it a second time. Um, but you know, uh, I, I, in the beginning, of course, when I first lost Paul, I was angry and, um, but the deal was he he was with me all the time, mm. and I I I just prayed and prayed and prayed. And one time I was praying and asking him, "What can I do? What can I do? Where can I place this agony? What am I going to do?" And I don't know, Father. It just came to me out of the blue. And it was, write your blessings. Mm. And I did. And so I, I, I had to paper and pencil, and I did. I started to write my blessings. And I'm not saying that that, that was the cure-all, not by, not by a long shot, but... Mm. It was helpful. Mm. Simple, it was helpful. simple, but so helpful. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and the, there's something powerful about your willingness to follow the 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 impulse, the intuition that told you to do that, because that would be a very easy thing to just brush off. Mm-hmm. But you didn't. No, you... it it was something that I 
that I knew I should do. Oh. I can't explain it. I just knew that that would that that I should I should count my blessings because I because. I did have blessings. Yes. And I, I, I do. I have many blessings. And um, so, and I think to this day, we all have different tragedies, but every everyone has so much going on that um, sometimes the only thing we can do is try and count the blessings that we have. <laughs> Mary Jane, you taught me something. When, uh, when we lost, we lost one of our beloved teenagers in the parish a couple of years ago. Uh, he was a, a beautiful 18 year old and he died in a car accident just as suddenly as your son. And I turned, I turned to you when I was trying to help that family because I didn't, I was so afraid of how hard it was for them. I was so afraid of the grief. And you said something about the grief of someone who's lost a child so suddenly. You said, you used an image and I'm not sure if you'll remember it, but I'd, I'd like to share it and have you talk about it as much as you'd like. You, do you remember that I, I asked you, how do I help them? And you, you compared the grief that they were having to an ocean. Do you remember that? Yes, Father. <laughs> Talk to me about the ocean that a family is in. You, the way you described it helped me to, to maybe bow a little bit before the mystery of it. What would you say about grief being like an ocean for a family in that situation? I think when when you lose, especially I think when you lose a child, there seems to be nothing, nothing out there. Everything, it's like an ocean because all you see when you look out at the ocean is water, 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 and you don't see anything else. You don't see you know, a roadway to travel, mm. some, some help, some something, some a place to turn, um, something out there that that gives you hope. You're just you're just so so destroyed mm. by by what's happened that um, it just reminds me of the ocean with with nothing. And it doesn't look like there's any, any, anything at all yes. out there to turn to. And mm -hmm. you, you said to me that day, I remember also, you, you look, you look one way and then the other and you can't see land on any, on any side. That's it. Oh, that is, uh -huh. yes. T there are many people listening who love someone who has who has lost a child and they know that their grief is overwhelming, but they don't know how to help them. They're, they're maybe, you know, I, I've heard stories where um, sisters who grew up very close get to m midlife and then one of the sisters loses a child and the other sister who's always known how to comfort her sister, how to help her, how to be there for her, no longer does she know what to do. There's not a single thing that feels like it would be helpful. What would you, as someone who's lost children, what would you suggest to those of us out there who want to help, we want to somehow enter their world, but we don't know even where to start? Father, it's difficult. It's, um, you're at a place where you feel totally empty as if there's nothing, there's nothing further. Um, there's, it's, it's just so totally barren. Mm. 
So, but I remember having lost, and this was back when I lost Tommy. I looked up, I was sitting in a chair, and I was just sobbing and sobbing. And what happened was my sister-in-law came in, and she all she did was sit down in a chair across from me and just sit there. Mm. Just quietly, never said anything. Mm. But she was with me. Mm. She and and it it really it really made a difference. Mm. And, but she said nothing. She said nothing. She just she just sat there and just was like my company. Uh, I knew she was going do this with me quietly, you know, silently, really. And but I knew I. I, I knew how badly she felt and how and how much she cared and mm. and at that point I wanted to give her some consolation myself. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you know what I love about that? I've never th- had that thought before, but Mary Jane, that was maybe the f- first time that you were able to actually do something. You were so powerless over the loss, but you could share consolation with her. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So she gave you the dignity of, wow, that's really beautiful. That's, that's, that's something I think for us to hold on to. I'm also struck by you saying uh, the people who came and didn't change the subject. Mm-hmm. Didn't change, I'll let you talk about it until you changed the subject. Yes. That feels important. And and the courage it must take to sit with somebody and not say a word when all of us want to do something to make it better, but to sit and not say a word, it reminds me of something that maybe you've heard of too. Um, the, the, our Jewish brothers and sisters have a practice, a practice of sitting what they call shiva with someone who uh-huh. is grieving. And the family comes and they wear black together and they just sit. And the friends come and they just sit. It sounds like what you're saying is there is such deep wisdom to that. Yes. Mm. Mary Jane. Yes, yes, Father. Please go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to say that sometimes... Well, I just felt as though I could, I could somehow through, even through her, um, be recognized more, recognize even, even more that she was there and there were, there are still, there is still people, people around who can help you. Ah. I, it gave me a sense to that of of people caring so much mm, mm. being there for you. Because you know how hard loss is, you, I'm sure, can understand why so many people right now during the coronavirus pandemic are living in terrible fear. They are anticipating some terrible grief. And I am sure there's people that are, they're living, feeling like they're waiting for the other shoe to drop because they know that this is, you know, and, and where we are right now as this is being recorded, the, uh, the numbers are rising out of control in New York City, but also our state is the most, uh, has the state with the most cases and there's so much fear. What, how do you handle the fear of future losses? How do you how do you stay peaceful when your own children and grandchildren are driving around or you know have their own vulnerabilities as all humans do? What do you do with that feeling of worry? Well, you know, Father, no matter how much we worry, there are certain things over which we have no control. 
Mm. Where there isn't anything that you can absolutely put your finger on that's going to change things. The only thing I think we can do is it's just is pray to the dear Lord, know and 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 know that He's right there for you and He's by your side, and have have faith and trust. I I don't know if there's anything that as human beings we I mean, what can we do in a case like that? People, some people are so terribly concerned. And full of, of anxiety, of course. Mm. And so I believe that we just need to trust. We need to trust and and do the best, the very best we can. I, um, I yes. I just don't know uh, of anything else that we can do. Well, those those words coming from someone who has had to trust as much as you have, I think really can help us. I think that really has the power to help us. That trust is something. We have to we have to be willing to see to know that we can live without many things we we've never had to live without and to trust just to see what trust can bring. You know? Mm-hmm. Mary Jane, you know that when people hear this interview, they're going to think of someone and they're going to send it to them. They're going to say, I heard this beautiful conversation and I, I want to send this to my friend who's going through something or I'm going to send, I know someone at work who has a sister who's going through this and they're going to send it. And there might be some mothers out there that are sitting down for the first time with someone who's speaking exactly about what they're going through. What do you want to say to a mother who is hearing your voice right now, who is going through this? I'm just going to say, I understand your agony. It hurts me even now just to think of it. The agony is so strong, so powerful that we just need to thank God for our faith Mm. and pray for his help. And I know, I believe with all my heart and soul he will be there to help, to help hold, to help hold you, to help, to help everything that you need in all your needs and that it takes time and that it does get not better, softer. Mm, it gets not better, but softer. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Do you know what someone said to me recently? And I, I'd like to get your reaction to this. She said that someone had said this about their grief. They said, my grief would not shrink, so I had to expand. Oh, that's that's beautiful. You can relate to that. Oh, yes. My grief is not going to get smaller. I must expand. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hope if that, I mean that I'm, I'm glad to hear that that resonates. Cause when I heard that, I thought that sounds like that's deeply true. That's powerful. That's powerful. Oh, yes, it is. Mar- Mary Jane, your husband and your son, Dan, Tommy and your son, Paul and your husband, Dan, is that correct? Yes. So yes, Dan and Tommy and Paul all live now with God. And you've got your parents there and you've got other loved ones there. And I know you've lost dear friends. How do you view heaven? Well, Father, you know, I I think I have a very simple faith. 
I mean, I, I, but my view of, so my view of heaven is, is a place of such love and peace. I, I, I view it as somewhere, for example, with my family, I, because, because food and dinner and, and uh, being together always means so much to us, that's how I look at it, as if I'm going home. Mm. And we're going to be together. Mm. And, and it's going to be like a beautiful, wonderful dinner and... Uh, that we can all share. <laughs> mm. So it's quite simple, really, Father. I just, I just look at it as a, oh, so beautiful and and with such happiness and peace. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, it's funny. You said you have a very simple faith, and I and I and I understand what you're saying, and I love it. But I want to also say, it strikes me that maybe the mark of faith is not so much if it is, you know, intricate or, or complicated or, or very developed or if it works. <laughs> you know, if a simple thing works, I mean, your faith does, your faith has muscles. It's done. It's had to lift a lot of stuff and it knows how to work. It knows how to go to work. And I imagine it's going to work right now. I, you know, there's a couple of questions before we, before we conclude. I'm so grateful for your time. Thank you for this conversation. I'd, I'd like to conclude with a couple questions that I'm asking everybody that I'm having these conversations with about uh, challenges and endurance. You've already started to answer this one, so maybe you don't need to say much more, but a lot of people believe in the saying, everything happens for a reason. What, what do you think about that? I, 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 I really don't give that too much thought, Father. I think that, that there are many reasons sometimes when, um, when things happen. I mean, there are so, so many things around us that cause things to happen, to change, to, uh, to get better, to get worse. I, I, I just feel that, I, I don't know, I, I, no, I, I don't think that is, is being true. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I, I just, I just think that um, we do the best we can, and sometimes things will work out the way we hope, and Sometimes the way we don't, but in the long run, it's it turns out that it was for the best. So mm. I don't know. I don't think there's a real answer to that, Father. I I think that's a great. I think I think bowing before a mystery is a very good thing to do. Let's not try to answer something that is a. As a, I heard Bishop Hubbard used to always say when he'd get asked a question that was so complicated or sometimes it had a little catch to it, he'd say, "You know what? That's above my pay grade." <laughs> and I just loved it. I loved. I'm such a fair answer. That's above my pay grade. Uh huh. That sure is. <laughs> hey, another question. I know that you've had to endure more than just your your grief, and you've. I know you've got a couple of dear friends right now that are having to endure cancer, for example. And yeah. you've had to endure many things over your years. What do you think, in your experience, is the key that, that you need to practice the virtue of endurance? I think it's, I think it's faith in God. I think that um, you, I, I would try to put, I, I would, I would put things into his hands and ask for his help according to his will. Mm, 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 mm. Tell me, and, yes, 
Yeah. Yes. No, go is, ahead. Is Father. there is there more you want to say? No, not really. Uh, you've got kids and grandkids all over. You've got people that you love, and you are as affected by coronavirus. You're t you're talking to me from your quarantine at your house right now. Yes. Tell me about your best hopes for what life will be like after this. What are what are your hopes and and real prayers about where we will head after coronavirus? I hope that people will have a kinder, gentler, more loving heart. Mm. I just wish that people would have more tolerance, less anger, more compassion, mm. care more for each other. Mm. I really do because I think if if that comes about, even just a little bit, it'll make such wonderful, beautiful changes in our world all the way around. Mm. That is a beautiful vision. And I'll tell you, I am so excited. I love your vision of heaven. I hope that I get a seat near yours at that big family dinner. <laughs> Actually, and I Father, I would love it. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible. I don't know what the rules are for heaven, but I would really like it if God would let you cook too. <laughs> because your your eggplant, your eggplant. I know Skippy Skippy Pape might be listening to this and she makes a very good eggplant too, but it's a totally different recipe. Your eggplant is the best in the world. Your eggplant. And, uh, and there's, okay, father, I'll get you some. Oh, okay. that's how, how long do I have to fish? There's a couple eggplant chefs in our community that are just, it's some of the best you've ever had, but Mary Jane, I'm not sure if any of them could top yours. And, uh, you know, I have a little, I have a little grudge against your oldest son who happens to like your mother-in-law's recipe slightly more than yours. And you know, I, I have no patience for that. I have no patience for that. And Dan, Dan, if you're listening, I'm really, I'm still pretty steamed about it. So anyway, Mary Jane, thank you. Thank you for bringing your faith, your hope, and your love to this conversation. And I know that there are people listening who are going to take something, whatever, whatever it is, they're going to take something that is new for them. And maybe what I'll do is just, just take a moment to invite whoever's listening to, to just pause for a second, because it's easy to move on to the next thing. But let's just ask, what is it that maybe was brand new that you can, you can ponder because of this? What, 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 what is something that this mother who has known deep loss, what has she said that, that touched you? Is there anybody who came to mind while we were talking? Is there anybody whose story is in your heart because of this? Let's just take a moment to, uh, to also pray for the safety of your family. And let's, let's pray for all of those mothers that are listening who uh, bring tears to my eyes and my heart right now, who uh, mothers and fathers who know about the ocean you spoke of. And... Um, Let's pray that we will all sit together and just hold each other through it. Mary Jane, thank you. Thank you. And may God bless you and your family always. Thank you, Father, so very much.